Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we're going to be talking about something completely different. Engraving in color. Laser engraving. You heard me right. So stay right there. We're about to get started. All right, so um, I guess about last year or so, uh, somewhere around October, November, September, <laughs> somewhere in there, I don't remember, um, I started experimenting and we have a focus group, a private group of a couple of makers like myself, um, and we discuss all kinds of new ideas and te techniques there. And someone brought up the idea of uh, dry paint, laser engraving dry paint. And we discussed it and I guess did some testing and I've been doing testing and I've gotten it to work well on the diode laser and now just recently I've gotten it to work well on the CO2 as well. So uh, although it's not completely perfected, uh, there's still a few things that I want uh, to perfect but it's to the point now where uh, it, it's easy to do. So, uh, you know, I've got all my settings dialed in. I can move from laser to laser and know what to expect. It's something that anybody can do. And uh, it's laser engraving in color. And I know a lot of people don't believe it, but, you know, here it is. These are some colors right here. And... Basically what this is, and I know you can't see the second one green or blue or black. You may not be able to distinguish those on the camera, but um, they, they are very distinguishable uh, in, in real life when you look at it. I can see the red, green, blue, white, and black. Uh, and these are just quick tests. You know, I wasn't expecting anything um, to come out perfectly. But... What I've been experimenting with, and I should say what a bunch of us have been experimenting with, and a few people have already gotten some videos out on it, is uh, powder coating. So I've been experimenting with uh, dry paint, uh, powder coating, mica, and a couple of different other things. And it seems that um, the mica and the powder coat seem to work the best. Some of the uh, challenges that I had along the way was the fan, the cooling on the diode laser. Now on the CO2, I can turn off the air. So that's not a problem. And you know, when using powders, uh, as the laser passes over it with the diode, it disperses the powder that's there on the wood or the substrate, whatever it is that you're doing. And uh, the beauty of this is that you can not only engrave wood in color, but you can also engrave any other type of material in color. So just think of it this way. Uh, now I do some uh, marble and slate um, headstones for a, pet, a local pet cemetery. And the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get this going was so that I could get the coloring into the stones. And uh, I've gotten to the point now where I feel that in fact, I have a stone outside right now in the weather. Uh, it's been out there for since December, and I want to see how, how this holds up. So um, you can do just about anything with this, and especially hard surfaces like stone uh, and wood and things like that. So uh, there are a couple limitations that uh, I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to show you um, how I've developed the settings. So I'll show you some burns, a few videos, and um, I'll also show you a few projects where you can see what, what the result was and some of the testing that I've done. And by the end of this video, you should feel pretty confident that, you know, you can buy some powder coat or, uh, you know, you can buy some uh, powder paint. And, you know, they, they do have these powdered paints that you mix in water. Uh, uh, they're available on Amazon. That works well as, as well. So um, by the end of this video, you'll feel confident to do some experimenting yourself 
and maybe try and find what your settings are to get this done. But I can tell you that uh, you're going to wind up with some really, really nice projects. And as a teaser, <laughs> this one's not completely finished yet, but take a look at that. Now that that is a work of art right there. And I'm going to go over how I how I got the different colors on this a little later in the video. I'll show you the different layers and what I did to uh, get that colorized like that, the, the different shades. So uh, let's jump into a couple of videos and let's get started with the CO2 and then we'll get to the diode laser a little bit later. All right, so here we go. This I know this is a bad camera angle um, right here, but um, this was the first engraving and I did a, an offset fill around the outside and then started the engraving um, of an M16. So I, I got some blueprints online at Google, whatever blueprints, and started this engraving. And now I, you see those big magnets, those are there to hold it in place because I'm about to do another burn on it with the powder coat. Now I'm going to tell you, I've been playing with this since, oh, I don't know, uh, last October, September probably. And uh, what you're seeing online, uh, all these people that are telling you that, you know, these exact procedures that you have to do, don't pay any attention to that. <laughs> There's no exact procedure. You don't need a, a paintbrush. You don't need a metal business card. You don't need any of that. And a little bit of this goes a long way, by the way. So forget about, you know, the other guys, their tutorials, <laughs> because they are just over the top. Yeah, way over the top, if you ask me. All you're going to do is just spread this out, very lightly. Don't get into any of the grooves, just spread it out and move it around. And this is just how easy it is. Now I'm not putting any pressure on this, okay? I'm just moving the, the powder around in the area. Something like this has got a lot of lines, so it's kind of hard to see what I need to fill in and what I don't. But I'm going to do my best. I, I've done a couple dozen of these already. And not this particular uh, model, but similar to this. And every one of them have come out really nice. So this one has a lot of little fine detail in it that the other ones that I've done hasn't, so this will be a good experiment for me to see how well this one comes out with these tiny little lines. And I'm hoping it comes out as good as the rest. So, and like I said, it doesn't take much powder here to do this. So use it sparingly. get a rope just a little off the edge but don't worry about that because I reclaim everything that I rub off the edge so uh, I'll, I'll scrape it off the cardboard when I'm finished put it back into the baggie So I think we've got what we need. And again, like I said, there's no no particular formula to doing this. Try and get an even coat, as even as you can, without, you know, going crazy and trying to get it done. So I'm, I'm just pulling these little piles off the edge so I can reclaim them later. If 
But when I'm done, I'll also do some reclamation as well from the project here. Because the laser is only going to activate the powder that's in the grooves. So there'll, there'll be some left over when I'm done. I just want to make sure that I've got everything covered here. And it looks like I do. So I'm pretty sure that we're good to go here. So again, no, you know, no <laughs> using a brush and, you know, brushing it into all the grooves. You know, we're going to melt this stuff, folks. So it doesn't matter how you put it on. It's all going to melt the same way. So let's get this off the laser now. And all of that's going to get reclaimed along with the rest when I'm finished. All right, we'll put this back on. this part gently and there it is right there perfect fit so we're ready uh, I'm going to put the camera back inside and I'll show you the the burn um, from a bird's eye view <laughs> at a much slower speed now so we'll talk about speed and power in a minute all right, so um, I put this back on to the CO2. You can see that I've got those really strong magnets right there. So all I did was line up those magnets with the edges and it holds it in place. I can take it in and out. Uh, if you don't have a setup like this, you just have to make sure that you put the powder coat on while it's on the laser bed and it's secured in place and you don't move it and you'll be good. But I use these magnets. They work awesome. I'll put a link in the description to them. Uh, if you pick them up, you're going to love them too. So um, here I'm running the powder coat burn. And uh, you'll, you'll see that the results in just a minute. Um, I mean, it, I've got my speed now set at 200 millimeters a second on the CO2. And I've reduced my power down to 8%. So whatever your minimum firing power is going to be on the uh, on your CO2 is the number that you're going to want to use. Uh, well, you, you'll probably have to do some testing on some small pieces to get the right number. But for me, it was 8%. So uh, 200 millimeters per second, 8%. This is an 80 watt Monport uh, CO2 laser. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's doing the job perfectly those magnets really help where I can take it in and out power off on the co2 well there it is and you can't see it real well in in this light let me see if I can move down to a better lighting there we go but it did come out nice and blue let's see if I can get this to focus better look at that no black at all everything is blue I know it's hard to see with this camera but in person this is pretty impressive look at that you could probably see it best right there with the signature now keep in mind that this is all 
uh, very very small this is only 12 inches the whole the whole board and I forgot to cut it out I'm gonna have to cut it out now too um, but came out really nice nice color blue and I think we'll do something that uh, you can see the color better in all right so here is the final product well not the final product I still have to clean this up a little more and uh, you know put a coat of lacquer or something on it but this is the M16 burn and I want you to see here just how beautiful this came out look look at this I mean that is absolutely gorgeous I wanted to get and show you this close up because you didn't really see it in the video now there are some spots like right here where it missed for some reason and I guess maybe that's because I didn't take my time applying it but for the most part you can see that almost everything is covered here and the good part is it's engraved in those spots so you don't have to worry about it you know looking off you really can't see this when you look at it from a distance but look how nice this came out I mean this is absolutely beautiful did a beautiful job here and up at the top here you can see uh, you know all of the text came out perfectly I did burn the corners you know because I had my I didn't have my minimum speed set um, properly so that's my mistake though uh, you can see where the deeper it is the darker it is that that's that's one anomaly that I'm still trying to work out um, the lighter engravings like these this text here and these parts here uh, you know that all looks a bright blue but the blue gets very dark if you get a, a wide letter or the sides over here and again it it on this picture it doesn't look blue but this is all blue all of this is all blue it's just a darker shade in some places but uh, I really think that this came out fantastic all right so let's get into um, the results um, now you've seen the the etching uh, you've seen the application of the powder coat and you've seen the powder coat burn so now what happens afterward is this a, a great product or a lot of you are probably saying hey why don't I just put some transfer tape over my item and spray it with spray paint like everybody else does color fill and you know you can do things that way um, but you're talking about paint and you're gonna, you're gonna get a color that uh, you know is just I, I you know I, I do color fill I've done color fill projects but the thing is that it just doesn't come out looking right uh, and you have to put coat after coat after coat after coat to get it on properly and on some things it's okay you know that's how they do tombstones tombstones and other things they they go out and they put uh, you know some oil based paint and they wipe it all over it and then uh, wipe off the uh, excess and that's okay but this actually fills the groove uh, and it makes it look so much nicer let me show you a couple of examples the first one now this is um, and look at that you can actually see the the uh, the blue better in this picture on that than you could on, on the other one that I showed you earlier but look at this now here's here's some durability aspects here now this part over here of the engraving I didn't touch okay this part up in here I uh, got my putty knife out and I started scraping at it and you can see some of the scrapes there and this does scrape off now the engraving part is equal to the wood it's raised up so it's not indented anymore this is all a flat surface all the way across but you can see that it does scrape off and over here I use the edge of the uh, scraper and you can see that I was able to cut right through it with the scraper and up here I did some more scraping and you know so is it permanent it is if you don't scratch it off <laughs> what I like about it and another thing too is that um, you have to do um, you know side-to-side -side scanning on this 
So you, you have to be at zero degrees to scan this properly. And you'll see the lines here as they scan side to side gives it the texture, the texturized look. Like what you would get from a CO2 uh, engraving acrylic, for example. That That's the exact uh, texture that you'll get right there. And, you know, this is three millimeter plywood. And uh, it just did a, a fantastic job. Look how sharp all the edges are. The edges are perfectly sharp. And I think that if you just coated this with a coat of lacquer or polyurethane or, you know, whatever, uh, after you're done, uh, it, it would make a really, really fine, fine project. All right, so we're done with the CO2 version. Let's flip over to the diode version, and I'll show you uh, some things that just didn't work out. With the diode laser, I used a 5.5 watt diode laser, uh, the LC40 by Jimitsu. And it did all of the uh, same coloring, you know, did a great, great job with all of the dark colors. However, <laughs> when it came to the light colors, like white, you cannot uh, get a good burn with this. The white is more of a powder and it's, it's super powdery where the dark colors are uh, much denser. So it just kind of blows the white off. But you can see by this, now this was um, 2000 speed, 80 power that I ran the engraving at. And then 2000 speed, 40 power that I ran the fill, the uh, powder coat fill at. So uh, I've tried all different speeds and uh, I 38 to about 42 was where I needed to be to get a good burn on this. But you can see, I mean, it came out absolutely gorgeous, stunning. It's beautiful. You, I, you probably can't see it in the video, but it sparkles uh, as you move it, the darker color. And I, I, I'm sure that you're not going to be able to pick this up in the video, but, you know, it's worth a shot anyway. <laughs> so that that's the problem that I had was the real light colors, um, the real, real light blue, the white the, the problem is that on the diode laser, uh, what it does is it blows the, the powder right off. So only a tiny bit is left. And I've done everything that you can possibly imagine. Uh, and it does the same thing with the paint, interesting enough, the uh, powdered paint. Uh, I've done everything. I, I've sprayed it with, <laughs> with glue and let it dry a little bit to attack and then applied the powder. That didn't work. Um, I've mixed it with just a little bit of water and filled it in. Uh, that wound up staining the outside. That did work, by the way. But it wound up staining the outside of the wood. So that is no good. So if you're going to do light colors like um, white, for instance, or any of the powder coats that are real fine, uh, you're better off just using transfer tape, uh, you know, running your design with the transfer tape on and spray painting it for the lighter colors. I have not been able to find a solution to that. And that's why I was holding off on the video. Um, the solution was no solution at this point. Further testing is needed. And actually, I was planning on launching this video sometime this summer once I've gone through all my different testing. And I've been, I've done a lot of testing uh, over the last five or six months since I started with this project. And uh, I've tried all different types of uh, material on top of the, um, the engraving to see how it would come out. And the only ones that uh, actually worked was the powdered paint, the mica, and the uh, powder coat. So that's, which really powder coat is powdered paint. <laughs> uh, they do have two different names for it, but it's basically the same thing. So um, let's talk about the mica next. All right, so um, some of you are probably wondering, what about the mica? The mica, um, okay, I'm gonna say that it works 
and it doesn't work. <laughs> you don't get the color, you don't get the sparkle, you don't get any of that. But what you do get is you get a much, much darker burn. So no matter what color you use, and I'm looking at one now that I did in purple. Um, and there it is. Now, when I did this first engraving, it was a very light, looked just like the wood. It was the same color as the wood, it had no, no darkness to it. So then what I decided to do was I did another one side by side, right next to it, the same exact numbers. And uh, on this one, I used 2000 speed and 80% power to do the engraving. Then I went back and redid this one with the mica a second time. And then I did a second pass on the other one. And the other one still looked like the color of the wood. But this one, uh, it was a really good blackening agent. Um, so while you don't see the purple, okay, it, it looks like it's black. There is a hint of purple. You don't get any of the sparkle from the mica or anything like that. But there is a hint of purple in this burn. And um, it really is a really good agent to use if you want to get a dark, dark burn on something. And it doesn't come off. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, permanent, uh, it's a permanent process. This does not come off once you've done it. Now, I've also done this with the mica in uh, red, green, yellow. Same, similar results. You don't see the real color. You see a little bit of blue. You'll see a little bit of, of uh, green, you know, the different colors. But, and none of this is going to, none of this shows up on camera. So that's why I'm not pulling out the other samples. But, um, but you do get a really good darkening agent. So mica is cheap. You know, you can buy that stuff. Real, it's nothing like powder coat. Powder coat is, you know, uh, I don't know, 500 times the cost per ounce. <laughs> So you can use the mica and you can get a really, a really superb burn, you know, um, with a hint of color, just a hint of color. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, if you're just looking to darken up your burns, that would be a good solution for you. So, uh, that's it for the mica. Let's move on. All right. <laughs> the moment I know that some of you have been waiting for. Um, is the reveal on the compass and talking about the layering and how I achieved the different colors. So, uh, of course, this is the final product. And this is four layers. And let's start with the bottom layer. So, bottom layer is where I did the powder coat around the outside and you'll see down at the bottom where I screwed up the alignment uh, that doesn't make a difference because I wound up getting it aligned and I just moved it around until the the two lines on either side matched up and ran the burn again so that doesn't matter because that's covered up so I wasn't too worried about that um, but you can see that this is the powder coat and I used a um, coffee stain for the middle part to black out the middle part. So that's layer number one. Layer number two goes on top of that. And here you can see where I used a uh, pecan stain. And all I did was stain the inside part here. None of that out there has to be stained. So I just stained the inside part of layer number two. And basically what I wanted to do was give it multicolors so that it would, uh, you could see the different layers. So then layer number three, <laughs> I took some red, uh, some paint, red paint and the powder coat and mixed them together because I wanted it to be uh, a different color from the actual powder coat itself 
to sort of stand out. So again, I only had to do the middle part because the rest of it's being covered up by the last and final layer. And the last and final layer is the pecan stain all by itself and the powder coating. And now let me tell you something, a step that I missed in this, and I'm making this one as a gift and hopefully he's not going to notice the error that I made. But before you work with uh, wood, any wood, it doesn't matter what it is that you're staining or finishing in any way, you always have to seal the wood before you stain it. And you use either a pre-stain or a sanding sealer. And I recommend sanding sealer because it goes on very quickly. You wipe it off, it dries very quickly and you're ready to stain. And you won't get the different uh, blotches like you see here. So um, that was the step that I missed on this and I regret it now. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Uh, I'm about to either uh, lacquer this or polycrylic maybe. I'm not sure if I want the lacquer shine or if I want the polycrylic flat. Um, but when you do these things, right now it's laying flat on my table with a weight on top to keep it from warping. Keep all of the layers from warping. When you do something like this, you want to make sure that um, you're sealing both sides. So when you put your finished coat, your top coat on, you want to make sure that you top coat the front and the back of every layer. Um, that will seal the wood all the way around. And you got to make sure that you're getting in all these grooves and everything. And that's what's going to keep, keep it from um, warping, from uh, absorbing moisture in the air. Uh, you know, absorbing the moisture, drying out, absorbing the moisture, drying out. Eventually, it's going to crack and warp and everything else. So uh, make sure that you uh, do the final finish on both sides, even before you glue it up. Uh, and then once you've glued it up, you know that it's not going to warp, crack, uh, stain, or anything like that. So uh, that's about it. That's the whole video. Uh, now, there's going to be more to come. I'm going to take some uh, more time. I'm going to do more testing because I want to get the diode version down. I don't want to just be able to uh, do dark colors with the diode. I want to be able to do the light colors as well in some future products uh, projects. So um, I'm going to keep testing. And uh, I, I probably have another month or two to go on that testing. I'm going to try everything I can imagine and I will come up with a solution because I'm determined on this. Uh, I want to be able to get the same amount uh, of colors on the diode laser as I can get on the CO2. And the only difference between the two is that on the CO2, I can turn off the air. On the diode, the air is integrated into the uh, uh, cooling fins. You know, if you turn off the air on the diode, well, then the diode's going to overheat because it needs that uh, aluminum heat dissipator on the outside cooled by the air. So there's no way to turn off the air. If you did, you're going to ruin your diode. So uh, that's out of the question. Definitely can't turn off the air. But I need to find some solution to this. And I will. But it's just going to take some time. So anyway, what do you think uh, of this video? What do you think of the final compass? Uh, I hope you like it and uh, I hope you'll give this a try and I'm even thinking about possibly uh, you know I bought I don't know 15 pounds of this powder coat I think I might put some of it up for sale on my uh, graphics website engravencutfiles.com and uh, I think what I'll do is one of the other guys um, did you know a heaping teaspoon teaspoon of each color uh, for 20 bucks delivered. So I might do something like that. Um, I'll, I'll let you all know if I do that because I'm, I'm not going to, I've had this for, for five months now, five or six months. I've probably run, uh, you know, 150 different projects on it, small projects. And I haven't even made a dent in it because, you know, when I get done, I reclaim it. So I scrape it all off, put it back in the bag, 
and uh, move on to the next product. And you'll be shocked at how little of this you actually use because there's not a whole lot, unless you're doing a really deep engraving, you know, then, then you might use it up. But I'm pretty sure that I'll, I'm probably going to sell some of this off because, you know, I don't think I need more than four or five ounces to last me for the next two years. So look for that. That'll probably be coming soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today as much as I enjoyed making it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.